Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Understanding Politics. My name is Jadel Kibero here with Professor Harman Minyora. How are you doing this fine morning? Wonderful. It's a cold morning, but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when we did the last week's episode, we were talking about subscribers again. And this time, the subscribers have tremendously increased. Yes, I think yes, uh, yes. they're in love with the content that we're doing right now. We thank the, we thank the subscribers, those who have not please subscribe so that... Uh, we may grow together. Yeah, one of the few things that I think are very important and I've seen in your YouTube channel is the honest opinion that come in the comments section. Yes. And I was thinking, how are you able to deal with the positive criticism and sometimes the abuses that come when you give your own analysis? How do you First deal all, with we are grateful that people are able to give their views through the comment section. That's very encouraging. Mm. Certainly there will be people who will be abusive, will, will insult you. But uh, on average, you will get people who are agreeing with you, those who don't agree with you. Uh, a majority do so respectively. Mm. But of course, one or two isolated cases of insult, we take that in our stride. Does it affect you in any way? No, 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 I have a thick skin. <laughs> people <laughs> have argued that I should open a school to train people on anger management. I don't get annoyed. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the things you said last week about Professor's analysis on uh, the new CJ, CJ, Martha Kome. Last week, Professor, you had an advice for uh, this new CJ, Martha Koome, on how she should deal with uh, her new position as the CJ. This is what Kelly Larry said. Kelly said, many Kenyans have been fooled by the media that judiciary independence means free from interference of the president and parliament. Now we have a judiciary that is captive of evil civil society and everyone thinks it's okay. Do you think the judiciary sometimes gets affected and can this be uh, something that can harm the country? Let us agree that even the doctrine of the separation of powers, without going into the details, mm. even some of the lawyers perhaps have not read the, 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 the origin of the doctrine of separation of powers. Mm -hmm. Even the originators themselves, they never had in mind a situation where, say, the president, the judiciary, the, the legislature would be at par. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Because the president is one head of government and the two head of state. So he can play almost in the same league with them, almost, mm -hmm. but still be first among equals, at the level of him being head of government. Mm -hmm. But then he has another Kofi head of state that puts him way ahead of them. Uh -huh. But they need to work together, and the judicial is always uh, should always be aware that some of their pronouncements could create chaos or even a crisis. So you, they, they need to be careful. Do you think they are affected by the president or the parliament? Of course, yeah, they, 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 they don't operate in isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in a, an ideal situation, mm -hmm. the president ought to respect the judiciary and give them space to do their work mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. You, we even saw the judiciary trying to interfere with the parliament. That, again, was not good. Uh, yeah. Wangai Meligad, she said, stop the negative speculation. Let's give our CJ time and settle, uh, to settle and encourage her. There was nothing negative about my, 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 my comments on that. Uh, on what is happening about Ch Chief Justice uh, Kome. Mm. I was only saying, as the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, mm. she is the custodian of our constitution. Mm. Beyond anybody else, I know people have argued he's the military or he's the president, yeah. but I'm saying she's the person officially in charge of our constitution mm. when it comes to matters of interpretation. She must not allow the judiciary to go outside the law in matters that are clearly specific. Uh, stipulated. That's what I was saying. Well, how important then was that video? Why did you come up with that with that analysis? Because judiciary can also be wrong. Mm. Judiciary could be wrong. They could be captives of the civil society mm. or other forces. Just as they can be captive of the executive, mm. as we have seen in this country, they can equally be captive of the civil society and other forces. Mm. And I was arguing the chief justice, please do not allow the judiciary mm. to run away from the to depart from the law. Uh -huh. If the law makes a specific provision, for example, mm -hmm. two term limits, uh -huh. this, it can be argued. You mm -hmm. can bring philosophy, the doctrine of this, you can be academic mm -hmm. at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. And somebody can now argue by citing this and the other and say, it is not cast in stone. Yeah. A president can go for three terms. Mm -hmm. We must avoid that. Some Where it is provide, mm -hmm. provided for clearly, mm -hmm. two terms. Nobody should bring such an argument in court. But Where it is provided for, we shall amend our constitution mm. using this and this process. Mm. Don't try to bring philosophy and other doctrine. Mm. That's but academic. There's a time you said that give the people what they want. Yes. If people want something, you should give them. This is yes. a time you said that. Yes. Don't you think that 
the judiciary should also look at it and not uh, be at a point where things cannot be changed. No, the judiciary makes law. The judges make law. Uh -huh. But they don't make law in this manner. Mm. Because that is for the legislature and the people of Kenya. Mm. They make law by enriching jurisprudence. Mm. You see? By the way they look at things mm. that are not clear and they clarify them. Mm -hmm. Then you make law in that sense. Mm. But when things are clearly provided for, if you want to amend the constitution of the Republic of Kenya, mm. collect a million signatures mm. if you are not an MP, if you are not parliament, then move on until a referendum, oh. if it is necessary. Mm -hmm. It's clearly spelled out. So, why are you getting out to tell us what else we can do? Mm -hmm. And why are you telling us we, 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 we step out of the law? Oh. You see, that's what this judgment was telling us. Yeah. And I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. And I'm only alerting the Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. If this judgment stands, mm -hmm. in the fullness of time, mm -hmm. I'll be proved right. So something else will come, mm -hmm. and it will be subject of discussion academic arguments, mm. philosophical interpretations, oh, okay. doctrine of this, doctrine of that. Mm. In the future, they'll say, Manuela was right. <laughs> yeah. And they've said that quite a number of times. Yeah. Let's look at Stephen Nkosira. Uh, he said, there is, an, there is an ambiguity in most of the judgments that are offered in our courts, and that is why we are finding ourselves in conundrums and paradoxes, a deliberate delay of justice by courts. All these are, co are caused by corruption, my opinion. Another tragedy in our country is in the comp in the, in the competition between the judiciary through the so-called civil societies and the executive. A good example is the, ju is the Justice Ngugi one. Um, so sad. Uh, the, the thing he's talking about here is that he feels like the judiciary is being influenced a lot. And we started talking about that. Can the judiciary work uh, without corruption? And how, how can they, how can Martha Kome ensure that there is no corruption in the judiciary? The judiciary can work without corruption. Mm. We can get rid of corruption. But mm. you need structures. Mm. So the judiciary ought to put structures in place mm. so that you go beyond saying we are dealing with the corruption. Mm. No. Put structures. Put structures. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the topic for today, the talk, taking a look at some of the things that are being talked about out there, and Professor Minora and I are going to look at them intensively. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Muturi, was coronated as the spokesperson for the Mount Kenya region, at least by the eastern side. And some of the things that have been happening, Professor, is that they want now the Mount Kenya region to be united and accept that Justin Muturi will be their spokesperson and probably, we don't know how it will play, maybe the forerunner for, for the presidency come 2022. What are the, some of the scenarios that will happen if uh, Speaker Justin Muturi vies for the presidency in 2022? It's unlikely, it's unlikely that this move by Speaker Muturi is without the knowledge and even sanction mm. of the president. Mm -hmm. That being the case, it's also un it, it will therefore be unlikely that uh, the president will be urging on Muturi to go for presidency. I, I very much doubt. Mm -hmm. So it would be, this is going to be the, the, the key most figure mm -hmm. in the configuration of the handshake team in 2022, mm -hmm. where there are people like Raila, Davadi, Kalonzo, mm -hmm. the rest of these people, mm -hmm. Joe, Oparanya. Mm -hmm. So they are saying from, uh, from Mount Kenya, it will have to be Muturi. That's my thinking. Who will make the decision? Because uh, initially people thought it was Peter Kenneth. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. talked of Kafogo and the rest. Yeah. But I think through this coronation, mm -hmm. Uhuru seems to be speaking and saying, it will be Muturi, mm -hmm. and for good reason. Mm -hmm. Because Muturi is a, is a good man, mm -hmm. he's not tainted, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's, a, he's a very strong guy, mm -hmm. you can't push him around. Secondly, Uhuru seems to be employing a strategy where he's appeasing mm -hmm. Mount Kenya East. Mm -hmm. You know the Chief Justice, you can't say the President's role is not there. Yeah. This is politics. Mm -hmm. They never, there can never be an appointment without some element of yeah. influence here and there. Mm -hmm. So, if your mother call me Ameru, mm -hmm. Now Muturi, the, 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 the key most figure from Mount Kenya, uh -huh. also from uh, Mount Kenya East. Mm. You see, he's like be playing divide and rule. Mm. He, he, finally, he will now tell the Kikuyus, you see, mm. everybody else within the mountain, mm. <laughs> but, but what, is this in, what will happen then for yes. someone like the Deputy President if the Kikuyu nation, the Mount Kenya nation, comes up with their candidate for 2022? What will happen to the DP? Without the Mount Kenya vote, without the Kikuyu vote, the name of DP William Ruto will be erased from the political map of Kenya. Period. Mm. Yeah. And that's why I've argued mm. the Kikuyus, if they wanted to field a candidate, mm. they will be they, they, they will have an upper hand. They will be first 
pass the, 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 the rope. Don't you believe the DP the has numbers in, in the Kalimantan no. region? No, uh, Ruto's numbers begin and end with Mount Kenya. Mm. So once you pull that rug out mm. uh, under his feet, mm. it's gone. H how about uh, the former Prime Minister, Raila Odinga? Yes. If the QQ come up with, the, with their guy, yes. uh, the DP vice, mm. will Raila, if he vice for presidency, yes. be able to take it home? I, my honest opinion is if a Kikuyu, a strong Kikuyu candidate, mm. not this MCA like people I'm seeing around, yeah. somebody from somewhere, mm. but a strong Kikuyu, a Jamba, mm. comes up, mm. he will be number one in the ballot, mm -hmm. followed by Raila, mm. and there will be a runoff. A runoff, which yes. will be now the two guys. Yeah, between the Kikuyu candidate mm. and Raila Odinga. And then now how the country sees it, mm. those will be sulking, those will be annoyed. Yeah. It will depend, depend on who they are annoyed with the most. Mm. Will the Kalenjin, for example, be annoyed most with Raila mm. or with the Kikuyu who have betrayed them the last moment? Okay. That's how now the winner will be decided. What, what's your advice for, for the DP? Because this is, might happen. Yes. Can he win? Can Without he Kikuyus? Win? Yeah. Forget about it. I will not even run. Ruto minus the Kikuyus it would be nowhere. Because Jubilee in 2017, 2013, yeah. they won if we were to say winning 2017 because it was disputed. Mm -hmm. Because of the Kalenjin mm. and the Kikuyu. Mm. Now, if you remove the Kikuyu, mm. who, who constitute about two-thirds mm. of the Jubilee vote, mm. where, where would Ruto go? He won't go anywhere. It's just Biraila and the Kikuyu candidate. The Kikuyu candidate will be number one uh -huh. because of the absolute numbers. Mm. Raila will be second, most likely, mm. because some of the votes will have gone with Ruto. Mm. Now, the runoff between the Kikuyu and uh, uh, Raila, mm. certain factors will come into play. You may not know who will win. But the other guys, Kalonzo, oh, um, no, the there, there's nobody else. I'm telling you, there's nobody else. If a Kikuyu candidate is a strong one, uh -huh. no, this wannabes. A strong Kikuyu candidate, yeah. Raila, Ruto, mm. and the rest of these wannabes. Mm. The, the winner, the first and runner-up are so clear. It will be a Kikuyu and Raila. Will, can there be a scenario in which, if let's say Justin Muturi runs, can there be a scenario where he doesn't become the president? He cannot become president. It can't be Justin Muturi. Mm. It can't be these people associated yeah. with the world. Uh -huh. But not. If you are a Kikuyu and you are associated with Huru, yeah. to be very honest, mm. you will not win. Mm. You will not get Mount Kenya votes. Mm. You may get Kidogo Kidogo. Mm. If Muturi runs, he's my friend. Mm. He will get Embu, Membere, mm. a bit of Meru, and but one or two of Kikuyus, mm. but that will be, make him number four. There needs to be someone. He will be number four. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> number four. Of course. Anybody associated with Huru in the mountain now I cannot run and win the president. Why, why would you say that? The, the, the people seem to have an. A misconceived idea that he's a bad person. Mm. You know, I've been asking, for example, if Uhuru gave me a, a, a consultancy mm. to present the real Uhuru to Kenyans, mm. people will be shocked. What he has done for this country, mm. people will be shocked. If he gave me that consultant, yeah. do a documentary, mm. people will be shocked. Why do you think then the central region doesn't want him? I, I mean, you know, politics is about perception. Is someone tainting his name? No, it's about it's a perception. Why mm. people think they are suffering because of you? Mm. You know, there's general suffering in the country. Mm. The economy is not doing well. Mm. Everything is almost collapsed. Mm. They will blame one person. And the Ruto has successfully made the k people of Kenya, especially the Kikuyus, mm. blame Uhuru for their problem. It's mm. not true. Mm. But that's how it is. This is a global phenomenon. Mm. People are suffering across the globe. Yeah. Companies have closed. And people are looking yes. for, for someone to yes, blame. Yes, someone to blame. And Whenever people are, are in pain, mm. they look for someone to blame. Mm. Ruto has successfully mm. made the person to blame to be Uru Kenyatta. And since the Kikuyus are the ones who are the most enterprising in this country, mm. they are the most hard hit yeah. with these bad economic times, mm. then he successfully incites them Mm. against their own. And the perception changes. And for that reason, if you are associated with Uhuru and you want to president in Mount Kenya or anything, my friend, you won't get anywhere. Let's take a look <laughs> at uh, what some of you said is a very good segment. Would you rather for the last part of the show uh, right now? Example, would you rather prop? Uh, you move to a new place, there are new houses all around the place, but two people live close to one another and you'd like to move to one side of their houses. You have Mike Sonko or Joho. Who would you prefer to have as your neighbor? Oh, these are good people. 
maybe I'll, I'll prefer Sonko. Why Sonko? So that uh, I, I, occasion when I'm down, he can entertain me. I can be a little excited. Uh, he has some, I, I'm sure you might yes, be having yes, some yes. parties at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you rather have Susan Kihika or Dr. Miguna as your partner? You're a police officer and you need a, pol a, a partner to work with the streets and keep law and order. Who would you want as your partner? Neither. Why would you say that? They're, none of them are. They are erratic people. Ah. Uh, they are erratic. They are people who, at some point, they are looking this way. Next time, they, mm. you, you can't predict. Mm. You, you know, as a police officer, mm. you need some predictability. Mm. You need some order. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. You need to keep the straight mm. and narrow. Mm. But with these two, you may not be sure. Even but Susan Kihika? I will ask the Inspector General of Police to give me another person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you need some psychological help, Prof, and you need to go see someone. You have Moses Kuri and you have Milio Diambo. Who would you want to guide you in the elements of your life? You know, you are giving me very difficult choices today. <laughs> Milio is, is, is also chaotic. Yeah. Uh, Moses Kuria, my friend, is also the same. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll skip the sessions. You, you skip the sessions? Yeah, I'll skip the sessions. <laughs> you don't have to go to the doctor. No, no, I'll take a pill. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Understanding Politics with me, uh, Jadiel Kabiro, here with Professor Herman Manyora. See you next week. Let's get to understand the dynamics of the politics in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Jed. <laughs>